Dr. Grelo, and I, I just want to first say thank you, um, members of the press. Um, you really uh, help amplify our work and what we do, and most importantly, you help us convey it clearly to the public and to our patients. Um, so let me try to give you um, some context and background. Okay, so I am pleased to present um, an overview of the PROSPECT trial. So a key point about this trial is that this is publicly sponsored research, sponsored by the National Cancer Institute's cooperative groups, um, and really embodies the theme of Dr. Weiner's meeting, partnering with um, patients, and this is a partnership with academic and community cancer centers around the United States, Canada, and uh, actually a few from Switzerland as well. So here's a summary of the trial. Here's the take-home bottom line. Most intermediate risk rectal cancer patients can be cured without needing pelvic radiation. Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because we have been radiating pelvises to treat this type of rectal cancer for the past 30 years. So here's the background. Globally, there are about 800,000 new rectal cancer diagnoses expected in 2023, and about half of them have locally advanced rectal cancer. The number in the United States is about 48,000. And our standard approach is a five and a half week course of daily pelvic chemo radiation with a dollop of chemotherapy given at the same time. And this is the way we have achieved very high, um, uh, very good outcomes for treating rectal cancer. The reason radiation is so important is that rectal cancer has a nasty predilection to come back in the pelvis. Pelvic recurrence of rectal cancer is a cause of enormous suffering. So when it was developed, radiation was a critically important advance. It was first introduced in the 1980s, it became a quality measure in the 1990s, and has remained a mainstay of treatment ever since. This is what treatment with rectal cancer looks like. This is the schema. We achieve great outcomes for our patients, but it's long and it's hard. We give patients this five and a half week course of radiation along with chemotherapy. We let them recover. We take them to the operating room where um, there have been advances in, in surgical techniques. We let them recover. And then we give them about four months of chemotherapy. And again, this is the standard and it works quite well. The motivation underlying our study is that although it works well, pelvic radiation has real toxicities. It impairs bowel, bladder, sexual function, increased late, late effects like increased risk of pelvic fracture, second cancers. It can impair the function of the bone marrow, which can become a problem if people need chemotherapy in the future. It can cause infertility and premature menopause, which is a big deal because we are seeing increasing diagnoses of rectal cancer in people before the age of 50. So, what really motivated us is that there's been so much progress since radiation became the standard of care. Better chemotherapy, better surgical technique, more screening, so we're finding more tumors when they're smaller and easier to treat. Better imaging, so we can separate out the good ones from the really bad ones. So we asked the question, could we use radiation more selectively and only give it for people who don't respond to chemotherapy rather than giving the radiation to everyone as part of the standard. And again, this is a theme of can we de-escalate or de-intensify uh, therapy. So it's not a new drug, it's a de-intensification. This is the details of what the study looked like. The top is just what I showed you before, the standard approach. And the bottom, we gave patients chemotherapy first and if they responded, they then went to surgery and got the post-op chemo. But if they didn't respond, they had a second chance to get the radiation. This is for a particular stage of patients with uh, rectal cancer, so it's not for all patients. It did not include patients with very large or symptomatic um, tumors. These are the endpoints. 
Here are the results. We recruited from 264 centers in the US, Canada, and Switzerland. Blue shows the intervention arm, and red is the standard of care arm. Our patients were um, 57 years old. They were well balanced and matched. And at the end of five years, 80.8% had not had, uh, were alive without recurrence of their rectal cancer in the intervention arm, which is the select chemo with selective radiation arm, and 786 in the usual standard arm. Local recurrence rates were very low, and overall survival was similar. So the study met its pre-specified hypothesis. There were no meaningful differences between the two treatment approaches with respect to other outcomes. And importantly, only 9% of patients in the intervention arm ended up needing the radiation. We spent a lot of time um, discussing, uh, evaluating the toxicity, and what I'm proudest of is that we um, measure toxicity based on what the patients told us, and I, I won't belabor that, but that was really a paradigm shift in how we conducted um, this trial. So um, let me stop there and answer any questions, but we think that we can successfully de-escalate treatment of rectal cancer and achieve uh, the same high cure rates, keep patients disease-free um, with uh, less long-term toxicity and effects. Thank you. So to invite Dr. Pamela Coons, an ASCO expert, to make a few additional comments with respect uh, to the significance of this research. Dr. <clears throat> Great, thank you. What's important here is that radiation can be safely omitted in many patients with locally advanced rectal cancer. This is really less is more. And the study shows that we can spare select patients from receiving radiation without compromising efficacy. <clears throat> this leads to improved quality of life and reduced side effects, including things like early menopause and infertility. This trial is practice changing, and it aligns incredibly well with the theme at this year's annual meeting around de-escalation of therapy and partnering with patients. <clears throat>